on the night of June 30th, 2018. 21-year-old Amelia Holden was in the middle of her shift at Vinnie Van Gogo's Pizzeria in Savannah, Georgia, when a patron groped her. Holden had just taken an order from one table and went to a tray to put menus back in their place. A couple of seconds later, 31-year-old customer Ryan Chawinski started walking in her direction. As soon as he was directly behind Holden, he grabbed her bottom and simply walked past her as if nothing had happened. Holden reacted quickly by grabbing the collar of the man's shirt and putting him into a choke hole before throwing him to the ground. She shouted instructions to not touch her and even swore at Chawinski. The grabber tried defending himself, pleading that he was just trying to push her out of the way. Police responded to the scene and reviewed surveillance footage, which corroborated Holden's claims. Chawinski was arrested at the scene in front of his wife and two children. He was booked into jail on charges of battery. After footage of the incident went viral, people online were praising Holden for her quick response. One individual let loose about the situation saying, she is my new hero. Number 12. Darren Hickey On April 5, 2019, 51-year-old wedding venue manager Darren Hickey died in what the Daily Mail called a freak accident after eating a hot fish cake that left him unable to breathe. The Englishman had recovered from a stroke seven years earlier and had struggled with walking and talking ever since. On April 4, he was managing the Ridgemont House in Chorley, which was going to be used for a wedding. Before leaving the location, one of his chefs asked him to try a fish cake. Upon tasting it, the back of his throat was immediately burned, causing his voice box to swell. The pain in his throat intensified throughout the day, so he went to the urgent care ward at Chorley Hospital, where he was given paracetamol and advised to return if the pain increased. Hickey went home and rested, but later started coughing. His partner eventually found him choking. Hickey was rushed to the Royal Bolton Hospital, but was pronounced dead in the early hours of the following day. After his post-mortem, it was ruled that the cause of death was asphyxiation, the same sort normally seen in people who'd breathed smoke in house fires. The pathologist who'd performed the examination said that the case was very rare. In the aftermath, coroner Alan Walsh said that the incident raised questions about the care at Chorley Hospital's emergency medical facility, prompting an inquest. Although Hickey had been seen by a practitioner in the facility with the assistance of an ear, nose, and throat unit specialist at Preston Hospital, they didn't find the potentially fatal damage. It was due to the fact that the undetected injury had occurred far down the victim's throat. The inquest concluded with the coroner recording a verdict of accidental death. Walsh said that the tragedy was ultimately brought about by the fish cake. Number 11. Israel Bobby Silver One of the owners of the Bangkok Bistro, located in Schenectady, New York, died on June 23, 2012, after sustaining injuries when his head was caught in the dumb waiter. Israel Bobby Silver had been a bartender at the restaurant, but he and his friend eventually bought the restaurant outright. At the time of the incident, the 30-year-old and the several restaurant staff were working in the basement kitchen. A cook had prepared an appetizer and placed it in the dumbwaiter car to send it to the upstairs dining area. The cook stepped aside while Silver was standing next to the hoistway door. Shortly thereafter, the manager upstairs yelled down the shaft, asking about the appetizer. Silver then leaned into the dumbwaiter shaft and told the manager that the dish was ready. The manager looked down and saw the appetizer, but didn't see Silver in the shaft. She activated the dumbwaiter car, causing it to move upwards. At that point, Silver's head was caught between the upper frame of the access opening and the bottom shelf of the dumbwaiter car. The cook swiftly moved the car downward to release the victim. The workers then helped the man to the floor. A 911 call was placed by the staff, and when first responders arrived, they attempted to treat Silver. He quickly succumbed to his injuries and was pronounced dead at the scene. Records indicated that the immediate cause of death was massive cranial cerebral trauma. 
It was later determined that the victim's blood and alcohol content was 0.13%, which was nearly twice the legal limit for driving a motor vehicle in the state. In the aftermath, the incident was treated as an accident and no charges were filed. Number 10. Tina Strader On the morning of April 20, 2021, Florida woman Tina Strader was found severely beaten, bruised and unconscious in a hotel room in Venice. The 46-year-old and her husband, Gerald Strader, had been employed at a roadway in location in the area. On the day in question, Tina was cleaning room 209 when Gerald didn't hear back from her. For more than an hour, the man grew worried. Disabled and in a wheelchair, he made his way to the room and initially found no one. However, he noticed that the bed was covered in bloodstains. When the husband finally opened the room's closet, he found his wife unresponsive with a towel stuffed into her mouth. He immediately called 911 and while waiting for first responders, individuals near the scene tried helping by performing CPR on the woman. When emergency medical services arrived, they rushed Tina to a local hospital despite their efforts. Tina succumbed to her injuries hours later. Shortly after receiving the initial 911 call, law enforcement responded to a report of a suspicious white male acting erratically at an intersection near the hotel. It took five deputies to restrain the suspect, later identified as 30-year-old Stephen Matthew Havrilka. Detectives later found that Havrilka was a guest at the hotel. The inn's surveillance footage revealed that after Tina entered room 209 to clean, Havrilka entered a minute later. Detectives believed that he had beat the woman then left her for dead in a closet. After further reviewing the footage, detectives determined that when Havrilka left the room, no one else went in or out of it until the victim was discovered by her husband. In the aftermath, Havrilka was charged with second-degree murder and held in the Sarasota County Jail without bond. Records indicate that he had a criminal record including 19 felony and 10 misdemeanor convictions. Five days before Hav Rilke's scheduled trial, Judge Thomas Krug announced that he was incompetent to proceed to trial. Krug's determination came after Hav Rilke was examined by two psychologists. As a result, Hav Rilke was now expected to be committed to a state psychiatric facility until or if he ever regains competency. Number 9. Hooters Brawl On the night of October the 6th of 2022, a brutal attack took place at the Hooters in Plano, Texas, which stemmed from an argument over kids selling chocolate bars. Two teenage boys had been trying to sell chocolate bars to customers inside the restaurant. When employees asked them to leave, they became belligerent. As the boys were being escorted out, they turned chairs over and threw objects. The pair then went outside to a waiting car from which three adult males had emerged. The trio then proceeded into the restaurant's vestibule and started assaulting employees and customers. They pinned the restaurant's manager to a corner and knocked him to the ground before repeatedly punching him. Customers and servers caught in the middle of the fight struggled to get out of the way as employees and customers tried holding the inner doors closed. One of the attackers threw a weighted standing ashtray through the window. Flying glass cut some people standing nearby. The incident left the manager with a broken arm, a waitress with cuts on her face from broken glass and several others injured. Cell phone video of the attack was shared online and led to tips that helped police identify the three men as 19-year-old. Jeremiah Powell, 20-year-old Tony Marshall, and 19-year-old Jay Powell. Jeremiah and Marshall were later arrested. Jay, who was facing aggravated assault charges, remained at large. Jeremiah was charged with assault causing bodily injury and riot participation. On July 26, 2023, Marshall was sentenced to five years behind bars after being convicted of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. No further updates were made in Jeremiah's and Jay's cases. Number 8. Confrontation at a Red Lobster A family's night out at Red Lobster erupted into violence, during which a mother 
smashed a glass against the server's head. She claimed that the waitress disrespected her disabled son. The exact location of the Red Lobster branch wasn't made clear, but the incident took place in May of 2018. The shocking fight was caught on video and uploaded on August 25th, 2018, getting more than 66,000 views within a week. In the video, a female server could be seen charging towards a female diner saying, You want to throw shit at me, you b The customer put her hands up to protect her face and yelled at the waitress, egging her on. When the server grabbed her arms, the diner smashed the glass cup against the server's head. The glass shattered with an audible clatter. As other patrons at the restaurant shouted in shock, another waitress intervened and held back the angry female server, who subsequently walked towards the kitchen. The angry customer then re-emerged, saying, Disrespecting my disabled child? As the waitress defended herself, the pair resumed berating each other. In the end, the mother beckoned her son out of the restaurant. It was unclear if any charges were made in the aftermath. Number 7. Diana Ditch 30-year-old Chinese-American restaurant worker Diana Ditch was attacked by a customer after she allegedly didn't charge him for egg rolls. Ditch was working at her family's restaurant, Happy Takeout, in Sacramento, California, on August 29, 2021, when customer Anthony Brewer picked up his order. Ditch claimed he gave Brewer a free egg roll, which didn't have the same proportion as what was usually served. The 42-year-old demanded a remake of the whole order and was angry that the roll wasn't in his to-go bag. Ditch attempted to de-escalate the situation and showed the customer an itemized receipt to show him that she never charged him for the egg rolls. At that point, the customer became even more enraged, yelling profanities before throwing the bag of food at Ditch. When he left, Ditch followed him outside to take a photo of his car. Brewer consequently threw the woman into the street, leaving her with several scrapes. The following day, he was arrested for felony assault. The man told ABC10 that he was sorry for what he'd done and claimed that throwing the woman into the street was self-defense. After Ditch started pepper spraying him, it was unclear what penalties Brewer received, if any. Number 6. The Popeyes Incident In November of 2019, a video of a fight at Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen in San Antonio, Texas went viral, showing an employee and a customer throwing trays at one another. A witness only identified as Valerie said she saw a woman come into the establishment through a side door. Valerie suspected that the woman had initially been in the drive through The woman subsequently approached a female employee at the counter and for unclear reasons, the two started yelling at each other. The situation escalated further as the employee yelled profanities before eventually throwing a serving tray at the other woman. The patron then caught the tray and flung it back at the worker. At that point, a man intervened and pulled the customer away as the two women continued yelling at each other. Valerie said that the man took the woman outside and the manager followed them shortly after. She added that though it wasn't caught on the video, the woman and the manager got into a fist fight. Law enforcement showed up about half an hour later, but it was unclear if any charges were filed in connection with the incident. Number 5. Cheryl Marie Bauer On March 4, 2011, a waitress plunged to her death after falling down a lift shaft during her shift at a private dining facility in Oklahoma City. The victim, Cheryl Marie Bauer, had been employed at the Paseo Grill Reserve. The restaurant was housed in a structure built in 1947. Investigators believe that on the day in question, the 21-year-old might have been loading or unloading a dumb waiter on the first floor. When the lift malfunctioned, it fell to the ground, taking Bauer with it. The woman was taken to a hospital but died from her injuries three days later. 
In the wake of the incident, Bauer's father, Eric, said he was frustrated with the lack of explanations as to how the accident had occurred because apparently there were no witnesses. He added that he was heartbroken over the loss of his daughter. Due to the fact that the incident wasn't investigated as a crime, the Federal Occupational Safety and Health Administration opened their own investigation. It is worth noting that dumb waiters, unlike personnel lifts, are not subject to annual inspections and are not typically meant to ferry large cargo such as people. As of this writing, the results of OSHA's investigation are not currently available. Number 4. Brittany Mason and Jada Statham A dispute over condiments on a sandwich at a Subway restaurant in Atlanta, Georgia resulted in two employees being shot, one of whom was ultimately pronounced dead at an area hospital. The ordeal unfolded on the evening of June 26, 2022, immediately after customer Melvin Williams received a sandwich he'd ordered. The 36-year-old reportedly got upset over the amount of mayonnaise that had been put on his food. 26-year-old employee Brittany Mason offered to make the sandwich again, to which Williams responded, I don't want you to make the sandwich. Consequently, Mason and another worker, 24-year-old Jada Statham, asked the man to leave and eventually called 911 as the situation escalated. According to the store owner, it was at that point that all hell broke loose. Witnesses saw Williams pulling out a gun and shooting both employees before fleeing. Statham was hit twice as she protected her preschool-aged son, who was inside the establishment at the time. She survived thanks to treatment from a local hospital. Mason, however, was not so lucky and later died from her injuries. Police arrested the shooter later that night. Officers found out that Williams was out on bond in connection with another case. He was facing charges of murder, felony murder, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, criminal damage to property, cruelty to children, and possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. As of the latest updates, Williams remained behind bars while awaiting his trial, which hadn't been scheduled. Number 3. Jamie Adair 65-year-old Clarence Locke Jr. was arrested on May 21, 2018, after he slapped a waitress's rear at a Denny's location in Rome, New York. Locke had just arrived at the restaurant with his wife. While the wife went to use the bathroom, 23-year-old waitress Jamie Adair went over to take their order. After Adair took the order, she walked away, at which point Locke leaned over and smacked her on the behind. Adair immediately reported the incident to her manager. Locke was consequently asked to leave, and he did. The incident was reported to authorities, prompting officers to review CCTV. Police located Locke and took him into custody on a charge of forcible touching. Adair apparently knew him as a regular by the nickname Peter. According to the victim, he had made questionable comments toward her in the past. In his own statement to the police, Locke admitted to slapping the waitress on the behind, acknowledging that he'd crossed the line. He would go on to plead not guilty according to a now defunct source. A plea deal was not offered. The ultimate outcome of the case remains unclear. Today's topic was requested by 1J Nefseed. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comment section below. Number 2. Sarah Rivera and Debrika Green at a Hooters restaurant located in the Chicago suburb of Oak Lawn. Police were called in to break up a fight between two workers on the afternoon of July 20, 2017. 25-year-old waitress Sarah Rivera had gotten into an argument that escalated to violence with one of her co-workers, identified as 24-year-old Debrika Green. Although the cause of the physical altercation wasn't made clear, the two young women were arrested at around 5 p.m. Police records indicate that both women were charged with misdemeanor disorderly conduct. They were later released on a $120 bond. 
Rivera's police booking photo showed her still wearing her low-cut Hooters uniform. Stick around after number one. If you have not yet seen our release about when waitresses and waiters go wrong. Number one, Emily Russell. Ohio woman Rosemary Hain, who'd been convicted of assaulting a Chipotle employee, was spared longer jail time if she would agree to work as an employee at a fast food restaurant for two months. The 39-year-old had been caught in a viral video screaming at employee Emily Russell on September 5, 2023, before throwing her food in the worker's face. In the clip, Hain could be seen initially slamming her order down on the counter at the restaurant's Palmer branch and arguing with Russell, who'd stepped in to protect a teen worker from being yelled at. A minute of arguing escalated as Hain threw her entire burrito bowl into Russell's face before storming out of the store. Russell said that the food thrown at her was hot and it burned her face. She added that the humiliated incident made her suffer from anxiety and ultimately quit her job at Chipotle. Immediately after the incident, witnesses took note of the woman's license plate and reported Hain to the police. The suspect was arrested shortly after. When she appeared in court, she pleaded guilty to one count of assault and apologized to the victim. While attempting to explain the motivation behind her assault, Judge Timothy Gilligan quipped back telling her, I bet you won't be happy with the food in jail. Gilligan originally planned to sentence the defendant to pay a fine and serve 180 days in jail, 90 of which would be suspended. However, due to the nature of the offense, he offered Hain the chance to reduce her sentence further, provided that she would work at least 20 hours per week at a fast food restaurant for two months. Hain accepted the deal. In the end, Russell said that she was satisfied with Hain's sentence, noting that the woman would be given the chance to walk in her shoes. Number 7. Recep Chetin In August of 2011, the bodies of two Irish women were found buried in shallow graves in the woods outside the popular Turkish resort town of Kusadasi. Subsequent medical examinations determined that the victims, identified as Marion Graham and her friend Kathy Dinsmore, had been fatally stabbed. During the investigation that followed, local police brought waiter Recep Chetin in for questioning. The latter had been dating Graham's teenage daughter, Shannon, for a period of roughly two years. The young couple shared a villa in Kusadasi with the two victims, but neighbors told investigators that the tenants would regularly engage in contentious shouting matches. While being interviewed by the police, Chetin initially claimed that the two victims had been abducted by a gang of men who took them to a nearby forest. However, after a few hours of interrogation, he confessed to committing the killings and he was arrested on murder charges. The waiter revealed that on the night of the double homicide, he'd pleaded with Graham to allow her daughter to marry him when the woman refused, stating that Shannon was too young for him. He brutally attacked her and Dinsmore in a fit of vengeful rage. Chetin then attempted to be tried in juvenile courts by claiming he was 17 years old, but bone marrow tests confirmed that the waiter was actually aged 22. Following his criminal trial, Chetin was sentenced to life imprisonment. Number 6. Alexandria Seletos A man was beaten and robbed outside the Drink Nightclub in Tampa, Florida in the early morning hours of February the 16th of 2017. According to local authorities, the victim who was left unidentified in subsequent reports on the incident was accosted by two assailants who fled the scene in a vehicle belonging to Alexandria Seletos. The latter, who'd reportedly worked at the club as a waitress for about four months before being terminated, told the police that her car had been stolen by the two men. However, following further investigation into the matter, it was determined that Seletos had freely given her vehicle to the men. Detectives also found that she'd personally instructed them to carry out the violent robbery for reasons that weren't immediately revealed to the public. The former server was consequently arrested and charged with principal to robbery, principal to kidnapping, and filing a false report. On April the 10th of 2015, Victoria Lynn Backman was fired from her job as a waitress at the Ozona Blue restaurant in Palm Harbor, Florida. 
after it was found that she'd been secretly increasing the tips on her customers' checks. According to the affidavit associated with 21-year-old Backman's arrest, she'd changed the tip amount on 134 checks. During her employment at the establishment, the Pinellas County Police Department detailed how, when inputting her tips into the restaurant's computer system, the young woman would enter a higher amount than the customers had actually written on the bill. The scheme had reportedly resulted in a total of $1,074.15 being fraudulently charged to customers. Backman faced grand theft charges in connection to the fraud. She was later released from custody on a $2,000 bond, pending the start of her case's legal proceedings. Number 3. Georgina Henshaw 65-year-old chef Philip Rolfe was found critically injured in his car outside an apartment in the West Midlands region of England in the early hours of July the 7th of 2017. Rolf, who'd suffered several stab wounds, was rushed to a nearby hospital where he was ultimately pronounced dead as a result of excessive internal bleeding. The apartment outside of which the car had been parked was determined to have belonged to Georgina Henshaw, a waitress who worked with Rolf at the Toby Carvery pub and restaurant in Birmingham. The 36-year-old woman was taken to the police station to undergo a line of questioning, during which she reportedly feigned ignorance as to the circumstances surrounding Rolf's presumed murder. Georgina? It's the police. Just going to wait for um, a van why, to come why, round. Why are being arrested? Obviously, I need to question you. Um, they what can't for? be they, on suspicion of what's happened tonight. What? What's, what? Nothing's happened. Okay, and what you may or may not know. I can't ask you any questions, and to be fair, I don't know very Are you much about me it. Phil dead? Yes. Seriously. That's why. It's serious. Uh, yes. Let's not discuss it. Investigators examined Henshaw's phone records, whereupon it was discovered that during past text conversations with a friend, she'd expressed overwhelming animosity towards the victim, as well as an explicit desire to kill him. In one such message, Henshaw wrote that she was going to lure him to her apartment and beat him with a kosh, also stating that she was set up to commit murder. Henshaw was thus named as the prime suspect in Rolf's killing and West Midlands police arrested the woman at her home, after which she was formally charged with the murder. The authorities didn't immediately indicate what they'd suspected to have been Henshaw's motive for the crime. However, it was speculated that Rolf had been embroiled in a contentious workplace feud with the waitress that had ultimately escalated to the point of extreme violence. Following a trial at Birmingham Crown Court, Henshaw was sentenced to serve at least 16 years behind bars. Number two. David Carroll Masoner Over the course of three years, Tennessee man David Carroll Masoner pilfered credit cards from patrons he'd served at the West Knoxville restaurants where he worked. It was reported that the 46-year-old had used his customers' stolen financial information to take out cash for himself and purchase various items including meals and gift cards. In the summer of 2017, however, Masoner unknowingly applied the scheme to a credit card belonging to an employee of the U.S. Attorney's Office. The unnamed woman would regularly check her billing statements and immediately notice the fraudulent charges. In the wake of her discovery, she cancelled her credit card and contacted both state and federal authorities, who were able to identify Masoner as the person behind the financial fraud. Agents with the Tennessee Highway Patrol's Identity Crimes Unit, the Drug Enforcement Administration and the U.S. Secret Service arrested the server who confessed to his extensive identity theft scheme. It subsequently emerged that Masoner had 27 previous felony convictions on his record, many of which involved credit card fraud. In spite of his criminal history, he'd managed to find employment at Honey Baked Hams, the Bearden Field House, Perros on the Hill, and Silver Spoon in Knoxville. Masoner ultimately pleaded guilty to three counts of identity theft, and he was consequently sentenced to 12 years in prison by a Knox County criminal court judge. Number 1. Alberto Sanchez Gomez In February of 2019, Spanish waiter Alberto Sanchez Gomez fatally strangled his mother following a heated row at their shared Madrid residence. Subsequent reports detailed how after the 68-year-old woman was dead, Sanchez used a carpenter's saw and two large kitchen knives 
to dismember her body into thousands of pieces, which he stored in lunchboxes placed around the apartment. According to The Independent, over the weeks that followed, the 28-year-old server proceeded to consume his mother's mutilated remains, eating some parts raw and others cooked. Local police were eventually notified by a friend of the victims that she hadn't been seen for several weeks. On February the 21st, law enforcement officers were dispatched to Sanchez's home to conduct a welfare check on his mother. When asked if the woman was in the apartment, the server reportedly replied, Yes, my mother is in here, dead. Sanchez initially described his mother's grisly killing in graphic detail, prompting the police to take him into custody. However, during the murder trial that followed, the man indicated that he'd heard hidden messages when he watched TV that told him to kill his mother. He also maintained that he had no recollection of dismembering the woman's corpse and that he was very repentant for his gruesome actions. The jury ultimately found Sanchez guilty of murder, for which he was sentenced to 15 years in prison plus an additional five months for the desecration of a corpse. Thanks for watching. Would you rather work in the service industry with enraged customers every day or in the military battling angry extremists? Let us know in the comments section below.